I'm having a shit day. It's raining outside. Uh, nothing is working out for me. I'm just, every, everything sucks. And uh, I feel like doing a video because I'm not going to let this day completely fuck me over. I'm going to get something out of it. So uh, I'm going to talk about a subject that I see no coverage of anywhere. Uh, it's a thing I've been mad about for years. And I've only really completely grokked the topic recently. I don't want to go into a two hour spiel about microphones, but it's necessary to give some coverage before I just go off. Uh, so you understand what the hell I'm talking about. So microphones, there's a lot of types. Um, there's a lot of types of microphones in the world. I mean, there's six major popular varieties I can think of. There's also some specialty types. There's some that are only used for certain applications, but they all work on completely different principles. I, I posted a bunch about this recently and it, it's just, there's so much to say about it. Every single type of microphone that's ever been invented operates on a completely different physical principle than all the others. So naturally, since they all work completely differently internally, you might think that they all expect different treatment from whatever they're being plugged into and you'd be right. Although there are several types of microphone that are very similar and will just work, uh, the rest of them require special treatment in order to operate. Fortunately, you don't normally need to know about this. So as a for example, this is a dynamic mic. It's a very simple piece of gear. Uh, inside here, inside this guy, uh, is a coil of wire and a magnet. And that's it. And there's a diaphragm here attached to either the coil or the magnet. And uh, when it moves, it generates voltage. So all you have to do in order to use this type of microphone is you plug in a cable, and then at the other end of the cable, an amplifier picks up the little tiny voltages that are coming out of this when you speak, and it makes them louder. That, that's it. It just proportionally increases them, and, and that's it. So this actually produces power when you speak into it. It's a little tiny generator. We're talking millivolts, a very, very little, and no current. So you couldn't, couldn't start your car off of a microphone, but in theory, with enough of them, maybe you could. I don't know. I've never checked the math. So this is one of the most basic types, and this is the sort that you're familiar with most likely if you ever sang in a church choir or otherwise had anything to do uh, with just a lollipop mic like that. They're pretty much all dynamic. Dynamic referring to actually having the magnet and the coil. All right, so another popular type is the condenser microphone. This has been the standard in uh, commercial applications, studio applications for decades and decades. These are from I think the 20s, 30s, and they are based on a completely different principle. Uh, internally, the microphone is a capacitor, and a capacitor, and there's some people watching this that are going to get mad when I explain it this way, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how I say it, because anyone who doesn't already know is going to be fine with this explanation. In a capacitor, you have two plates made out of conductive material. You attach wires to either one of them. In between them, you have a gap which has an insulator in it, something that doesn't conduct electricity. When you apply voltage to one side of the plate and attach ground on the other plate, what happens, more or less, is that electrons rush up the wire to this plate because they want to get to ground and they see ground over here and they can't get to it. So they rush up and they hit the plate but they can't get through the insulator. So they stop and they accumulate here on this plate. And now you have an abundance of electrons here and those electrons don't have anywhere to go. So if you remove the voltage from the positive plate here, the electrons suddenly have somewhere to go. There's less voltage behind them than there was, so they rush back because that's a lower potential. They can slip back closer to that. In a condenser microphone, condenser being a very old term for capacitor, one of the plates is attached to a diaphragm. So when you speak into it, this plate moves. And one way to think about it is that when this plate moves closer to that plate, it squeezes off some electrons. They, they get scooted back down and produce a pulse on the connection that's going into them. And then when it goes the opposite direction, it sucks in some extra electrons and that produce an opposite pulse. So if you can monitor those pulses and see which way the waves are going, you've got yourself a signal. And more or less, that's what's going on. It's a little more complicated than that, but for our purposes, that's fine. In order for this to work, you have to have a supply of voltage. So because you have to provide constant voltage, you have to give them a DC in order for these to operate, but the output signal is AC, you now have DC and AC on the same wire. So you have to be able to separate those out. You use a capacitor to couple the AC into the DC so that the 
signal that appears on the other side of the capacitor at the amplifier end is a duplicate of the AC signal that's appearing coming out of the microphone, but the DC doesn't come across with it. It's called phantom power. Now, condenser microphones that need phantom power operate typically at about 48 volts. Sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. Some can go down as low as 12. But what's important is that every professional audio mixer or digital input box provides 48 volt phantom power. They all do, except for the really, really bad, shitty ones. Almost everything provides it. With condenser mics, you can usually plug them into virtually anything that has an XLR jack on it, which is one of these. And there'll be a switch you can flip that'll cause it to give you 48 volts. And then they work and that's it. You just, you just plug it in. An important point about this, any jack that you could plug a condenser microphone into, you can almost always plug a dynamic microphone into as well. You just turn off the 48 volts and then it works. So then there's a third type of common microphone. There's others, but this is the only one you need to worry about right now. That's the electret microphone. That's E-L-E-C-T-R-E-T. -E -E Not electric, electret. That refers to a concept I don't really fully understand. It seems like black magic. The Wikipedia description says a permanently charged piece of material is electric. So ostensibly that's something that has a lot of electrons hanging around on it and somehow this allows it to generate its own power without needing to be recharged. I don't understand how it works. However, the point is that like a condenser mic, you do have a pair of capacitor plates and when you move one, you get a signal. But instead of creating ripples in a DC input, it produces its own voltage, sort of, kind of, anyway. What is important about these is that they are super, super, super tiny. And the voltage they output is incredibly, incredibly small. So in order to get anything useful out of it, you have to amplify it basically as soon as it comes out of the electric capsule. So in order to do that, virtually every electret mic in existence has its own built-in preamplifier, which boosts the signal up to something that isn't so infinitesimal before it goes down the wire and gets boosted up to something you can actually hear at the far end. This all gets done transparently. You don't know it's going on. It's all inside a little metal capsule that just has two wires. But if it has two wires, how do you get the power in? Okay, well, I'll skip to the punch, which is you give it phantom power, but you give it five volts, not 48 volts. These things all run on five volts. They just have a single transistor in there and it wants about five to eight, but five is what virtually everything is standardized on. However, you wouldn't know this to look it up. So these electric mics get used in all sorts of things. There's one in your smartphone. There's probably four in your smartphone. There's one in your computer headset if you have one. Uh, basically any tiny microphone that you have is an electret mic. It's the only type that really works all that well at that size. And while they aren't as good as condenser mics, they can be pretty damn good. But at the pro grade level, you usually only see condensers and dynamics, at least in my experience. Where you do see electrets though is on lapel mics, like this one right here. This is an electret mic. It's like the size of a pencil eraser. And as you can see, it's picking up my voice quite well. I mean, it's doing a great job. However, what you have to understand is that it has a separate power supply. Here, look. See this, this little capsule here? This has a button cell in it. That button cell provides 1.5 volts. I don't know how that's able to run the thing, but it seems to work. Everybody tells me an electrets need five volts to run. This one runs off 1.5. I don't get it. I haven't cracked it open to find out. I don't give a shit. Anyway, what's important about this is that this microphone is plugged directly into my Steinberg UR242 audio input box in a jack that normally only works with condenser microphones or dynamic microphones. If I were to plug this type of microphone in without the little power supply on here, it wouldn't operate. And the reason for that is that even though my box could provide 48 volts to run a condenser mic, it can't provide five. If I were to turn on the 48 volts, it would probably cook one of these little electret mics. I don't know for sure, but that's the impression that I get. <laughs> so the question then goes, well, how do you power these? How can they be operated? Well, I could plug one into my smartphone and it just works. I could plug one into the sound card on my computer and it just works. I could plug it into the USB sound card I have and it just works. Or I could plug it into my Tascam portable digital recorder and it doesn't work. So what gives? If you look at the specifications for the USB sound card or the sound card in my computer or my smartphone, none of them say anything about providing five volts power, but they do. They have little five volt power supplies in there. They don't tell you this. Nothing tells you this. In fact, if you plug headphones into your smartphone or if you mess up and plug them into a mic jack on your computer, as soon as that plug bottoms out, you'll hear a little click in your ear, sometimes kind of a loud one. 
The reason for that is that you just connected the speaker in your headphones to a 5 volt DC source, which basically causes the speaker to go thunk, just once. These things all provide this power, but they don't tell you they are. And what that means is you can't tell what will and won't work. This is a huge pain in the ass. See, this camcorder here, which is, I think, a Canon Vixia HFR800, if I recall. I'll update it on screen if I'm wrong. This camcorder has a shitty on-camera mic, so I wanted to get one to replace it, so I got this. So here's what I got to try and solve my camcorder situation. This is a little Stony stereo mic, and I'll put the part number in the description. I'm not going to provide the Amazon link because I'm not getting paid that way. I got this because the Amazon reviews said it was fantastic, but everybody who was using it just about was recording into a smartphone. I'm not recording into a smartphone. Now, at the time that I got it, I did record into a smartphone, so this seemed fine, and I used it a couple times, and it sounded great. However, once I got this camcorder, I tried plugging this in, and I got nothing. And I was confused. I said, look, if this worked on my smartphone, why doesn't it work on my camcorder? So I tried it on the digital recorder, the portable task cam, and it didn't work there either. So I was confused, and I kept trying it on things. And like, I think I had a sound card that worked, and another one that didn't. Uh, you know, I tried it on this computer's sound card when I was running a, a game uh, quite some time ago in a video, and it didn't work there either. I just couldn't for the life of me figure out what the hell was going on. So finally, uh, after a long, long, long period of research and trying things and trying other things, uh, I came to the conclusion that uh, this camcorder must not supply the 5 volt power necessary to run this thing. My phone does, my PC sound card does, other camcorders apparently do, and apparently some digital recorders even do, but just my particular devices don't. Had I known that, I might not have bought those devices. I might have bought other ones, because if you want to try and get a power injector for this thing to just add the voltage without having to replace your whole recording device, you can't do it. No one sells it. Try and Google it. Look up Electret Power Supply. All you'll find is websites with schematics for people trying to build them. You might find something which is a 48 volt phantom to 5 volt phantom converter, which is all well and good, except that I don't have an XLR device that I'm plugging this into. I want to plug it into my camcorder. This mic here I have plugged into my PC. This is great if it's stationary, but if I want to take this camcorder somewhere and shoot there, I need to have a microphone I can bring with me, and I would like to not be stuck with what's on the camera. Now, I could have given up and bought another one of these just to bring with the camcorder, but this has a 25-foot cord on it, and it's got the little external battery pack all the way up here, and I just, this isn't what I want, okay? I want... I want to use my device. I bought my fucking microphone and I want to use it, goddammit. And as someone who has electronic skills, I happen to be able to do something with that kind of spite. So here we are, uh, and as you can see, I've got the oscilloscope out, uh, and uh, I've got some various components here, and you could probably guess that I'm going to build a power supply uh, that's going to eject power so I can operate this Sony mic off of the camcorder. So I am using some garbage that I had laying around the house. Uh, I've got a 5 volt power supply here that I lopped the end off of. Whoops. Um, I have uh, this guy here. Uh, and the only reason I'm using that is because it has a convenient uh, eighth inch receptacle here um, and a plug here. So uh, one of these is mono, the other one's stereo. I don't know which is which. Uh, I'm going to take the stereo one. Uh, I'm going to lop the connector off, cut the cable here in the middle. And then we're going to put a power jack on here, and we're going to put a capacitor in there so that it blocks flow uh, so the uh, PC sound card or the uh, camera doesn't get that 5 volts ejected back into it. This should be really, really easy. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out how this thing is wired, and to that end, we're going to need an ohm meter. Where the fuck is my ohm meter? I think it's upstairs. Oh, okay, so uh, I had a lot of problems there. Um, I had to go and find my uh, multimeter, and then I got back and discovered my mic was clipping really bad. So um, I turned down the gain. I apologize for that. The video should sound a lot better now that I've done that. Okay, so what I've brought here is a cable we can use as a breakout. Um, so we're going to plug this in here, and then uh, we're going to find out which one of these leads goes where. See, my recollection is that this is a mono cable on one side and stereo on the other, so we got to make sure we pick the right one. So this one here is ground on the outside. Yep. Okay. And then we have tip. Okay, that's connected on one side only. And then ring. Okay. So it would appear that the green one, at a minimum, is stereo. Now let's check out 
the black one. Let's just first validate the shield is connected where I think it is. Hmm. Shield doesn't seem to be connected at all. Wow. Well, that's bullshit. So it appears that this cable's been uh, either damaged or it's very low quality because uh, I'm not getting any sort of ground connection on the black one there. All right, so we're just gonna use the green side then. I would normally want to cut this off to make it cleaner, um, but I'm not gonna do that because once you snip this, um, the really tiny conductors can then just sort of drift into each other and short out. Um, and that doesn't get you anything versus just leaving it on and leaving the insulation intact. Uh, and since this isn't any sort of, you know, production product, it's not something I'm giving to someone else, I, I don't give a shit. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. So we're just gonna mess with uh, this side here. All right, so let's go ahead and just snip this right in the middle. Oh, these wires are actually a little bit bigger than I expected. That's good, that makes things easier for us. Let's very carefully strip the outside, very carefully. All right, there we go. Hmm, okay, so this is a really shitty cable. It's not actually built correctly. So instead of having a shield and then two conductors, it just has three separate conductors. Now that's convenient for me. That actually makes things easier for me, but this is not a very good cable and my quality is gonna be worse than it could be if it were built correctly. I'm just gonna very carefully strip that. Very carefully strip this. Let's do the same over here. You only get one shot at this if, if you don't strip it right. If you clip it by accident or you get it too short or too long, you're pretty much out of luck. All right, there we go. I can work with that. I almost put this away and then I realized I need to know which one of these is tip and which one is ring. So the reason for that is I'm only gonna connect one. Now one thing I'm gonna point out is that the approach that I'm using to this does not permit me to use stereo because I would need two isolated supplies to do that. Um, as it is, if I were to common together the two conductors from the stereo mic here, in order to provide five volts to both of them, their signal would end up overlapping into one another and just ruin the whole thing. So I'm gonna have to make this a mono only adapter and that'll just have to be good enough. I'm sure that there's a schematics for making a stereo adapter, but honestly, I don't feel like doing it right now. In fact, I just Googled this and no, no one actually has a design for this, so I can't think off the top of my head. I didn't go to school for electrical engineering, so I can't think of a good way to get the DC to both of these without coupling the audio back. Maybe it's easy, I'm just missing it, but I don't wanna do it right now. I'll fuck it up. All right, so let's find tip. I'm gonna put my money on red. I think it's red. It was white. I was wrong. All right, so white is our color of the day. We do white on both sides and we're just gonna leave the red completely disconnected. All right, now the next thing to do is to figure out which capacitor we're going to use. So I'm just gonna look up an electric power supply design. There's a lot of them. So this suggests a 100 nanofarad. This one suggests 50 nanofarad. And this one suggests one microfarad. All right, so no big deal. All right, the way that's gonna work is uh, we ground the ground side of the mic. Then on the positive side, we're gonna put the positive side of the power supply. Um, we're supposed to have a resistor in there. Let me see what we suggest for resistors. I am seeing a 12 ohm. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's from XLR power supply. I might need to add a resistor to my power supply to adjust the bias on the transistor, but uh, I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Just see how it works without it. All right, so this is very simple then. Um, let's go ahead and get <clears throat> everything racked up. Now, after putting these through the connector, I've got a bit of a problem. There isn't really enough length on the conductors. Uh, I don't like that, that's not enough to play with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna <clears throat> snip the back off of this, uh, which removes the strain relief, but we're just gonna have to deal with that. Maybe I'll make a no better one of these one day. That won't be such a problem. All right. Now we got something to work with. This is the end that the mic is gonna plug into. So that's the side that the, um, the power is gonna be on. And this is the side that it needs to not be on. So there'll be a capacitor between these two. So what that means is that this one is gonna solder just directly right on to the center pin here 
and then we will fly the capacitor off of there to the other one. That's how that's going to work. This is a real tight core just to work in, so hopefully I'm not an idiot and this actually works. All right, step one. All right, center conductor's in there. All right, let's get that heating. Now for the capacitor, uh, people suggested a one microfarad, uh, suggested a lot of other things. Uh, I couldn't really find math to explain which one to use, and uh, I'm just going to try a, one that fits in the space I have, uh, which happens to be this um, 0 0.02, no, sorry, 0.2 microfarad. Um, I think it'll probably be fine. I don't really know shit about shit as far as this goes, so I might be completely wrong, but we're going to find out. So that's how I formed that, so I can slip it right up inside. Right up inside of here. In fact, I want this end shorter. I want it as short as possible. There you go. That's where that's going to live. Okay, let's roll this over. Okay, and I'm going to clean the tip on my iron. Things are sitting very nicely right now, so I'm just going to try and dab some solder on there. Hopefully everything stays where it's put. Now, there's solder on there, but it's not its not actually adhered yet. Got to go like that. The reason I'm just feeding more solder in is because that helps the heat transfer. Um, people say not to apply solder to the joint, but to a, or not to apply it to the tip, to apply it to the joint. That's all well and good, but when the joint won't heat up because you have bad heat transfer, that doesn't do you any good. So what I do instead is I apply a big blob of solder, just let it be messy, and then uh, I wait for it to soak and for the surface tension to pull it in up inside. The capillary action works it up inside the barrel and freezes everything. So that's a fine joint. That'll work. I'm a little worried about the positioning of the capacitor head. Um, it might get in the way of the barrel going back on, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. If I was working in a project box instead of inside the case of this, uh, I would have retained that wire and just put it somewhere, but, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can do with the limitations I, I picked for myself. So, And now we want to just roll that over so it can pinch a wire inside of it. There is a car alarm going off, but it is not mine. There we go. Okay. You can see in stripping this, I accidentally tore a hole right in the wall for the insulation. That's bad. That's real shitty, but there's not much I can do about it. We need to get this through the center of that capacitor. Now we're going to try and tin that midair. Hinky, but we'll see what happens. Beautiful. That took. No problem at all. That's a good cat you got there. Takes a tin, no problem. Just going to put this through here. Like yay. And then I'm going to see if I can just clamp that lead around it. Okay. We'll solder it and then we'll clip it. Just to make sure you can see I poked this wire through the capacitor lead, curled it over on itself, crimped it, and then soldered it. So now we can clip off the excess. And that means now that the output is isolated from the voltage of the input. Okay. But the uh, AC can come through. So we should be good. Now um, we need the grounds. Now that part is a little tougher than the rest. Getting those together is going to suck. Not sure if you can see that, but now both those wires are through the bottom and sort of peened over there. So now we're going to take our solder, that up, put it on there, let it flow onto the surface. For this sort of application, the quality of the joint's not all that important. Kind of like getting high on a budget. All right, so in theory, our product's done. Um, that's that's it. It's just uh, in, out, and a place for the power to, to get into the, the plumbing. So now uh, let's do some tests and find out if it worked. We've got an oscilloscope over here, which is going to help us find out if signal comes out. I'm going to, can I fit this? I'm not going to try and put this back into the, the jack yet. I'll, I'll do that once I know if it works. So that way we don't crimp the capacitor down and possibly short some things out. Um, so the first thing to do is 
we're going to plug the adapter from earlier in and see if we see a plus 5 volts on the mic side. I can't remember which one of these is tip and which is ring, so I should actually check that first. Now in this case, it doesn't matter which one's tip and ring, um, because it's a stereo mic, so either one of these signals will do. Um, but in other cases, this would be relevant. Um, if I accidentally hook up the ring instead of the tip, then plugging this into some microphones, I think, could actually short it out. And we don't want that. We want the ring to remain steadfastly disconnected. Okay. So the black center is the tip here. So if that's the case, if I did this right, then... Oh. Hmm. We've got some problems here, actually. What's happened is... Uh, I heated it too much and the center has actually floated over and uh, shorted almost against the chassis. That's bad, but we're going to address that in a bit. I can fix that. Okay, the outside's good. It's not shorted. The inside's there. All right, so let's address the um, tilted over center pin. As you can see, it's nearly shorted. It's not shorted, but I still can't plug anything into it. So I'm going to see. If I can just use a flathead driver to just bend it back over. It looks like um, it's too resistant to that. So what we're going to need to do is to heat it back up, but we can't have these wires come out and waste all my effort. So, so probably what happened is that this jaw here was up inside because it was gripping like this, and it was pressing against the center pin. So when I heated the center pin up, it was finally able to relax by moving. So that's a mistake on my part but who's surprised? So if we heat this back up, we're going to need to apply internal pressure to get it to go back where it belongs. So I've just shoved a screwdriver in there and I'm applying a little bit of torsion and let's heat this up. Okay, I can feel it giving. It moved some, but it needs to move a little more. Okay, it went too far. <laughs> it actually went back in the other direction. So, oh, there we go. Okay, it was still, it's still a little soft. So I'm just gonna hold it where it belongs for a moment, and then I'm going to take a power plug. I'm just going to whip it in there before it can cool off, hopefully. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. Okay, all right. Looks like I didn't lose any connections, so I think we're okay. All right, let's uh, find out which one of these lines is the plus five. It's probably the striped one, I would think. Yes, the striped one is positive. So now we know uh, we've got the voltage flowing to the center here. So now all we have to do is uh, look at the output from this on our scope and see if we get sound. We've already checked and verified there's no uh, positive uh, voltage coming out this end. Uh, so we should be good in that regard. I shouldn't see anything when I connect the scope to it. Let's get our microphone here. I'm going to get a shitty one that I bought that I never did get working. Now, of course, we don't know if it works. I think I tried this mic on a little pile wireless transceiver that cost five dollars and it worked there so it should be golden this guy here um, i don't have a i don't have a clip for the probe end so i'll just have to stick it on there now uh, if i'm wrong about this then the the microphone could blow up although i really doubt it so i'm going to put it over there okay we have anything do we have anything Nope, uh, it's not working. So, well, uh, doesn't seem to be doing anything. How about now? Nothing, huh? Not a dang thing. I wonder why that is. Let's do some sanity checking. Is there voltage, first off? Five volts there. No five volts there. Okay, now it's possible this Electra either needs higher voltage or is dead. Let's try another one. Okay, let's clip back on here. Anything? Oh, what's that? Oh, that's 60 hertz, isn't it? For a sanity check, I'm gonna run over and plug this into my sound card and see if it works on there. Okay, so uh, it doesn't work, and now I gotta figure out why. So in researching this, um, I was informed by somebody that the value of the resistor at the input in other words, uh, how much we're dropping the voltage um, actually configures how much gain we get on the transistor in here. So it's possible that I'm giving it so much voltage uh, that it's actually producing no gain. And they suggested I install a 2.2 K ohm resistor. So I'm going to get a potentiometer and we're going to wire it up and we're going to see if that makes it work better. So here is a 2K 
linear pot. So we're just going to disconnect the uh, voltage at this end. And then it's going to pop this bad boy right in here. Well, that won't work. Okay, let's try again with an approach that isn't completely fucking dumb. I don't know why I thought that would work. Okay, we attach clip there. We have the other clip here. Then we attach one of these legs. Uh, let's get a good grip. There we go. We'll attach that to the uh, input from the 5 volt power supply. There we go. Let's try again. I just tested this one over on my sound card, so I know it works. So we'll use this. Anything? Got anything? Oh, hey, would you look at that? Hey, we're getting some sound here. Let's, uh, let's increase the sweep rate. Does that work? We getting, uh, we getting some here? That looks like it's working. Now, I don't know what value this trimmer is at. Something's fucked up. I don't know what's going on here, because I'm getting signal at times. Let's put this, presumably, all the way up the top. There we go. How's that? Is that, is that working? That's not working. Is this flaky? How's that? Is that working? No. What the fuck's going on here? Hey, oh, oh, there's something there. Uh, is that it? Ah, fuck, the connector's flaky. But of course it is. I mean, we could have guessed that, right? Maybe that was the problem all along. Maybe there's nothing wrong with the bias voltage. Maybe this is the whole fucking issue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the real deal, the mic I actually wanted. Uh, let's plug in the Sony stereo mic that I've had so much trouble with. And let's see if we can get any sound out of it. There it is. I've been trying to get this mic working for over a year at this point, and it finally is. Okay, so now let's go plug this into my audio input, and uh, we'll see if it works. So here it is. Um, I've got it plugged into my uh, mess of a system here, and uh, I'm getting plenty of audio from it. I'm talking directly into it, and it, it sounds okay. If I turn it around and talk into the other side, um, oh, that's a much hotter signal. Uh, this is a stereo mic, and I only hooked up one mic, so uh, if I talk into one side, I get okay audio. If I talk into the other, I get really, really loud audio. But it is working, so my power supply design functions. So, there you have it. Uh, we've got our finished power supply. Just, just, there it is. Obviously, I need to put this in a better container. Um, my design of trying to put everything uh, inside of the connector itself doesn't really work because I need to put a resistor in there as well, and it was already pretty cramped, so I'm going to rework this. I'm going to do it all again at some point, but uh, the point is the, the proof of concept is valid, and I was able to build my own device that lets me use the microphone that I bought uh, any way I like instead of having to plug it into a fucking smartphone. It just sucks that they're so simple, but you can't get one. You can't buy one for any amount of money. As far as I can tell, no one sells them. I would have spent 25 bucks on this if somebody would have sold me a fucking power jack with a capacitor in it. Maybe not 25, but I would have spent money. It just sucks that like in the end, capitalism never delivers on its promises. It, it says that, you know, all you have to do is give money to someone and you can have whatever you want. That's not fucking true. I can't give money to someone in order to have what I want here. I had to build it myself because all the shit out there for $25 and $150 and $300, like this camcorder, won't provide it for me and doesn't tell me it doesn't. So we just end up with shit in our house that doesn't work and we don't know why. That's, that's awful. That sucks. Anyway, um, this rainy day continues to suck shit. I'm going to have a bad night, but hopefully you had a good time watching this video. Um, have a great night and uh, don't blow up your microphone trying to build one of these. Be careful.